Well, hi, it's a pleasure to welcome all of you to the 2020 College Public Health Picnic. As I've said many times, the picnic is one of the most important and one of the most enjoyable events that we have each year. It's important because it's an opportunity for us to get together before the semester begins to reconnect with each other, but also to celebrate the retirees that are with us, as well as the accomplishments of our faculty and staff, and especially to welcome the new members of the team. This year, we'll, the picnic is just as important, perhaps more important than it has been before, but it won't be quite as enjoyable because we're not together in person. But it really is important to take the same steps that we've taken before, to reflect on the year it passed, and to celebrate our accomplishments. And as I always, I like to begin by recognizing our retirees. I don't know who's watching, but if you're out there, if you're a retiree or a former faculty or staff in the college, please accept my sincere thanks. All of us in the college today know that we wouldn't have a College of Public Health at East Tennessee State University, and we certainly wouldn't be as competitive on the national level as we are without the, the college, the programs, the academics that you all created. You're the shoulders that we stand on, and we're deeply appreciative, and I can't thank you all enough. As we do every year, uh, we're really honored to welcome Dr. Brian Noland, our president, to the picnic. Despite everything that goes on for a university president, and I can't imagine a busier year than this one, Dr. Noland has always made the time to be with us uh, to say a few words. So now I'll turn the podium, turn the video over to Dr. Brian Noland, ETSU's ninth president. To the faculty, staff, and students of the College of Public Health, I welcome you to the start of the 2020 academic year here on the campus of East Tennessee State University. One of my favorite events at the start of every fall is to gather with you and to celebrate the success of your faculty at the annual picnic. Some years it's been at Rotary Park, other years it's been at Wing Deer Park, but irrespective of the setting, I am always impressed by the accolades, the accomplishments, and the camaraderie that exists on that day. I hate that we're unable to gather together in person, but I'm honored to be part of this virtual welcoming. So to you, to Dr. Wyckoff, and to all of the faculty in the College of Public Health, let's make this an outstanding year. Stay safe and go Bucks. We're also very pleased to be joined by Dr. Wilsey Bishop. Uh, 20 years ago, she was the dean of this college. It was then known as the College of Public and Allied Health. Since then, she's held a series of what we call progressively responsible positions. Uh, she's now the uh, senior vice president for academics and the interim provost. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Wilsey Bishop. I'm pleased to add my welcome to the start of the fall semester 2020. What a different year this has been. You could say this has been the year for public health. As Randy told the graduates in the spring convocation, you no longer have to explain what a public health professional does. And you certainly have a lot of materials for case studies and experiences to share with your students about living through a pandemic. I want you to know that I continue to be incredibly proud of this college and its accomplishments. You have strong leadership, an outstanding and hardworking faculty and staff, and you recruit high achieving students from across the United States and around the world. Your research continues to grow and to focus on issues that can make a real difference in the quality of life for individuals, families, and communities. You continually seek innovation and creativity in your academic programming and your community service and outreach model the work that your graduates will do in the future. Thank you for all that you have done this past year to provide a quality academic program for your students while weathering the COVID pandemic and its impact on your own lives. I'm grateful for the hopefulness and the resilience that you bring to your work, and I look forward to what you will accomplish in the year ahead. Thanks.
So let me turn this over now to others to introduce the new folks in their departments and their centers. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dr. Debbie Slauson, and I'm very excited to introduce and send a hearty welcome to Dr. Bethesda O'Connell as she joins us as an assistant professor in the Department of Community and Behavioral Health. She comes to us from Liberty University, where she has been an assistant professor and also the director of their MPH program. And we're very excited to have her back as she is a DRPH alumnus of ours. And we're looking forward to facilitating her efforts as she continues her work in the global health. She's done some amazing work with uh, water purification and um, other really crucial issues that are essential to safe housing and healthful and productive lives for people in low resource communities. So uh, join me in welcoming her to our crew. Thank you very much. Hi. I'm very pleased to introduce Dr. Suman Dalal, who has joined the Department of Health Sciences as an assistant professor in anatomy and physiology. Dr. Dalal obtained her BSc, MSc, and MPhil in zoology from the University of Delhi. After that, she continued her PhD research also at University of Delhi. However, the research was actually carried out in Dr. Krishna Singh's lab in the Department of Biomedical Sciences, Quillen College of Medicine. She completed her PhD in 2015 and continued as a research associate in the same department. She has published a number of uh, research articles in a very prestigious peer-reviewed journals. Dr. Dalal also got an opportunity to teach upper level biochemistry courses in the Department of Biological Sciences as an adjunct faculty. Um, we are very pleased to welcome Dr. Dalal in the Department of Health Sciences. Her primary responsibilities will be to teach upper level human physiology and ANP courses. However, as she is actively involved in cardiovascular research in Dr. Krishna Singh's lab, and lab is right here across the campus, she intends to continue her research efforts in collaboration with Dr. Singh. I wish her the best and hope this collaboration with Department of Health Sciences is fruitful for both Dr. Dalal and the department. Thank you. Hi all, uh, I wish I was with you and I hope you're doing well. I have the distinct honor of welcoming a new member of our team. Jordan Dijon joined us on July 15th and she's really hit the ground running. She's a new research project manager uh, working with me on the Choose Well initiative. She joins us um, with a really strong background in communication and project management. She has a bachelor's in communication from Clemson and a master's in health communication from John Hopkins. She has been living in the Johnson City area for a little while, um, moved here from the Charleston area, and we're really excited to have her on our team. Um, so welcome, Jordan. Hello, everybody. My name is Mike Smith from the Department of Health Services Management and Policy. It is my pleasure today to introduce you to Molly Sharp. Molly has been with ETSU since October 2019, uh, so you may have seen her around. She is the communication specialist with the Center for Applied Research and Evaluation in Women's Health. Uh, Molly has a bachelor's degree in communications from Appalachian State University, and she joined us from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, where she worked in external relations with the Department of Computer Science. We are thrilled to have uh, Molly as a part of our team. She's been a tremendous resource to us for the 10 months or so that she's been here. Um, and we are just really happy to be able to introduce her to you uh, as this is her first College of Public Health picnic. I would like to introduce our newest member to the Office of Student Services, Jared Hedrick. Jared is the recruiter and admissions counselor for the college and will take the lead on recruitment events for the college and serve as the liaison between interested students and ETSU. 
Jared comes to us from Liberty University as an admissions counselor and holds a degree in digital media. Through his digital media background, he has experience working with Joe Smith and ETSU University Relations to advertise news and events through soundbite interviews that ran on WETS. Jared's hobbies are playing guitar, reading, camping, and discussing politics and philosophy with friends. A fun fact, he did a camping road trip from Utah to Montana and back. Please join me in welcoming Jared to the college. I also had the pleasure of introducing four new members of the, for the Center for Rural Health Research, and I'm really pleased to welcome them to the College of Public Health. The first is Mike Meat. Mike comes to us uh, from the Walsh Center for Rural Health Analysis, where he's been co-director. Mike is one of the most well-connected, well-respected, and well-liked researchers in rural health across the country. Uh, he was the 2019 Rural Health Researcher of the Year by the National Rural Health Association. He's worked with partners and funders across the country and, of course, has worked with us at ETSU for a number of years. Mike and I began talking about whether I could attract him to ETSU about five years ago. And while he expressed some interest, there wasn't a way to make it happen until Governor Bill Lee created the Center for Rural Health Research, and then we got the additional funding uh, from Ballot Health. So I'm really pleased to welcome Mike as the Director of Research and Programs, basically the day-to-day -day operations director for the Center for Rural Health Research. The second person that I'm really pleased to welcome back to the College of Public Health is Kristen Minnick. Many of you know Kristen. She's a double graduate of our of our college. Uh, and she has been working locally for a number of years. She's currently the uh, director of the Washington County Health Department. She's very well known and well liked across the state. And Kristen is gonna help the Center for Rural Health Research build a network of partners in the most rural and economically distressed counties of central Appalachia and across the state. These are partners that we'll be able to work with for years to come in the future. The third uh, person I'm pleased to welcome is also another alumnus of the college, that's Sam Pettijohn. Sam is a more recent alum than Kristen, having just finished his doctoral program. Sam did his, um, his research, his dissertation on syringe exchange programs, but in the process of that became very interested in the people who are outside the system, the people who are not accessing health, uh, social supports, and other systems. And Sam's role with the center is going to be to try to find who those people are, who are the lost people of Appalachia, the lost people of rural Tennessee, how can we identify them, and how can we get them back into the system? The fourth and final person I'm pleased to welcome is Amy Walquist. Amy is originally from East Tennessee, but spent the last 13 years at the Medical University of South Carolina. She's a very well-known and well-established and well-liked biostatistician. She's worked on a range of issues from cancer to autism to tobacco, and she's going to bring a world of experience and knowledge to help us design really good and effective studies in the Center for Rural Health Research. All of our new folks will be joining the team that we've already put in place, and I'm really excited about the, the impact that the Center for Rural Health is going to have in growing and building the reputation of ETSU overall and the College of Public Health. So those of you who've been around a while know that this is the point in the picnic where I drone on a little bit about the success of the college. If this were a typical year, I'd start talking about some of the things that we've done and some of the things that we anticipate doing that we should all be proud of. And there's a lot going on. Uh, you know, in, one of the most remarkable things is that this fall, we expect to have our largest incoming DRPH class in history. We'll have to wait for census, but it also looks like we may have the largest incoming MPH class that we've ever had. That's really impressive, especially against the backdrop of increasing number of competitive institutions. I particularly want to point out that this year we're really proud to have the largest number of Coverdell Fellows in our DRPH and MPH class. These are returning Peace Corps volunteers, people who've been working in the field who know what kind of education they want to get, and they're choosing us to get their public health education, and that makes me really proud. Additionally, in addition to the largest DRPH and probably the largest MPH class, it looks like we're going to have our largest incoming undergraduate class as well. So against a backdrop of changing demographics 
economic and financial difficulties, the pandemic, political attacks on higher education. It's really remarkable, and we should be really proud that so many students are choosing us for their educational experience. Additionally, I think for the third year in a row, we will set a new record for the amount of externally funded research. Research on issues that make a real difference in our field. Women's health, opioids, rural health, uh, microbiology, physiology, some really, really important work is going on here. And as I say, it's the largest amount we've ever had. In terms of our public footprint, it's larger than ever. Each of the last two years, we've had 100 news and events items. And in the last year alone, we've had over 200,000 visits to our website. That's a 10% increase in a single year alone. So by all of those metrics, in any typical year, we would be sitting here being really proud of what we've accomplished and what we are going to accomplish. And while we can still be just that proud, we also have to recognize that this hasn't been and won't be a typical year. The year began sort of like the last couple of years, unfortunately, with us taking a budget cut because of reduced credit hour productivity. Now you may ask, how can we have a record number of students and reduce credit hours? Largely because non-majors are not enrolling in our courses. There aren't quite as many of them as there used to be. And we absorbed that budget cut as we always have. And we thought, well, maybe that was the worst. And then ironically, on Thanksgiving Day, the great flood of 2019 happened. It inundated the south side of the building. Many of us were displaced for several months. We had to work off-site. What a novel concept. And we thought maybe that was the worst thing that was going to happen. And then about the time we came back, this pandemic was starting to pick up. And over spring break, we had to pivot uh, 180 degrees and switch to online all of a sudden. And the pandemic is still ongoing. It's still uncertain. But I take two lessons away from it. And they're both positive things. First. It, it's actually been a boon for public health education, right? Because now, all of a sudden, everybody understands the importance of what we teach. Environmental health, microbiology, anatomy and physiology, health administration, community health, biostat, epidemiology, all of those things are in the news every day. And for the first time, not one of our graduates is going to have to explain to their grandparents what public health is. And I think the second lesson that I take away from this is a really positive one, and that is that we have done a remarkable job in staying true to our vision statement. Our vision statement says we want to provide students an exceptional educational experience in a world-class environment. And while that environment may change, we may have to go online, we may have to cancel lab classes. While all of that may change, we are still absolutely committed to giving our students an exceptional educational experience. And I think we can be really proud that for all of the changes going on, we continue to provide an education that is important to students who want it and need it and a society that appreciates what we're doing. So for that, I'm deeply appreciative. Now, there's a lot of challenges ahead of us. We still don't know, as we're recording this video, I still don't know exactly what's going to happen this fall. None of us do. But the one thing I'm sure of is that we will continue to provide our students an exceptional educational experience. And I know we can do that because we have an exceptional faculty and staff. As I've said many, many times, a college is not a building. It is not a curricula. It is a group of people a faculty and staff committed to educating the next generation of leaders. And that's what we're doing. And part of the joy of the picnic every year is being able to celebrate the success of a few folks uh, who've made particular contributions. And as I always do, I get to start with the Dean's Special Recognition Awards. I identify a few individuals and a few groups 
that have done an exceptional amount uh, for me personally or for the college over the past year. And this year I'm going to have two individual awards and one group award, then I'll present the awards selected by the Faculty and Staff Awards Committee. So the first Dean's Special Recognition Award goes to Dr. Patrick Brown, the Associate Professor in the Department of Health Sciences. You all know Patrick is a shy, retiring, low-energy faculty member, not a uh, very successful, uh, very effective, high-productivity faculty member. But that's not what I want to recognize Patrick for. I want to recognize him for two other things. One, I want to recognize him for his commitment to helping other faculty through his work to the Center for Teaching Excellence. And as I've said before, I actually went to Patrick when I wanted to improve my teaching chops. But even more importantly than that, I want to thank Patrick for his role as Chief Operating Officer of the Faculty Senate. Whenever there's challenges like we're facing today, with the pandemic, with budget cuts and so on, We've got to make decisions, and the best decisions are made collaboratively. Shared governance is not just a term. It's a way of life. It's a way of functioning. And it's folks like Patrick and the other leaders of the Faculty Senate that are bringing shared governance to this decision-making process. So, Patrick, let me thank you for everything that you do for the college, for our profession, for our university, and for our students. The other individual award I want to uh, give out is to Eric Jones, the executive aide in the Department of Health Sciences. Uh, Eric, as you know, has a pretty large portfolio. His department has the most faculty, the most students, the most courses, the most labs. I mean, it's a complex task. And Dr. Chakraborty tells me all the time what a great job Eric does. But I also have turned to Eric several times to help me out individually. He took responsibility for developing an electronic FAP FARFAY process that has made my job much easier in, do, in terms of the annual review of faculty and staff. And throughout the LAM Hall renovation process that you'll learn more about later, uh, I've turned to Eric for help with understanding how many classes we need, how large they are, how often we need them, and so on. His knowledge, his understanding, his hard work ethic have been tremendously valuable to me. So Eric, thank you very much for everything you do for us. I'm also pleased to give out one group recognition award to a group that's really been under-recognized. And, and it's surprising, though somewhat understandable. Uh, this, this research group has received the largest research grant, not in the history of the college, but in the history of the university. They're doing research that is changing the understanding of women's health. They're working across the southeast in three different states. Uh, a tremendously successful operation under the direction of Dr. Amal Khoury, and really the backbone of our research infrastructure. And I'm really pleased and honored to give a little bit of recognition for the Center for Applied Research and Evaluation of Women's Health, Care Women's Health, the Choose Well grant, a, a tremendously important grant that I think is going to fundamentally change our understanding of women's health in the southeast part of the United States. So Amal and your entire team, thank you very much.
Now it's my pleasure to introduce those awards selected by the Faculty and Staff Awards Committee. And before I do, I'd like to ask the members of the committee to please stand up. <laughs> Just um, you know, these awards are selected by your peers. Uh, they come with a plaque and a check, unlike the Dean's Award, and that tells you who it's more important to impress, the Dean or your peers. Um, but there'll be three faculty awards and, as always, two staff awards. And I'm going to start with the uh, Foundation Award for Service. As I've done in the past, I actually want to read quotes from the nomination packets, and I'm especially impressed with some of these quotes, because this year they come from both faculty, staff, and students. So about the award winner for the Foundation Award for Service, it says, this person, this comes from a, a, a fellow staff member, a fellow faculty member, this person is a valuable, dedicated employee who serves the College of Public Health on many important levels. She has many talents and is a quiet leader, bright, diplomatic, and with great technical skill. It's an honor to work with someone who's shown such great aptitude for the many jobs that she handles. But this is from a student, which I think is particularly interesting. This person has been an outstanding career advisor. I'm completing my bachelor's degree next month with the College of Public Health, and this person has been there with me every step of the way. I'm so thankful that she was on my team and helping me through college, because I could always count on her level of expertise and experience in getting things done for me, the student. Additionally, she's always been so kind and friendly with me, always laughing at my corny jokes, even though they weren't all funny. It's been one of the shining stars in my college journey. I'm pleased to present the 2020 Foundation Award for Service to Ms. Taylor Dula. Now I'm going to present the Foundation Award for Research. And again, I'm going to read uh, quotes from the nomination packet. And it's somewhat unusual to get a quote from a student on a research nomination, but this is what this person wrote. Uh, this individual is an exceptional support, support to students on the team, eagerly includes us in solving meaningful challenges in the study design. She works with students as colleagues while deftly stepping in to shape or redirect. I've appreciated the opportunity to learn from her. These quotes from fellow faculty members. This person's research is very focused on truly understanding the populations that she works with and is directly involved with all aspects of data collection, recruitment, and retention. Another quote, she's a very well-rounded scholar, excels in teaching. She advises and contributes to their field placements, dissertations, and other research projects. I'm very pleased to present the 2020 Foundation Award for Research to Dr. Katie Baker. I'd like to present the Foundation Award for Teaching. And as expected, we have some quotes from students, several different students. Uh, this person is an amazing teacher, makes material so clear to understand, and presents it in a way that allows students to easily study and truly understand the material. Another quote, does many amazing things for his students outside of purely teaching. Has many students doing research under his mentorship, volunteers, independent study, honors thesis, and master's projects. Another quote, he's an incredible professor and genuinely cares for his students and their success. I thoroughly enjoyed his class and learned a lot. I wish he taught more of my classes. Another quote from a student, he not only instructs, he shares his passion and enthusiasm for teaching. And from a peer, 
From a colleague's standpoint, dozens of students come to me each semester to express their appreciation for his teaching and his kind demeanor. Students are awed and often overcome with emotion when they talk about him. I'm pleased to award the 2020 Foundation Award for Outstanding Teaching to Sean Fox. the two staff awards. The first is for outstanding support staff. And while I normally keep the name till the end, I can't read the quotes from the students without using the name. So I will go ahead and tell you that the outstanding su support staff award goes to Mr. Chuck Patton in the Department of Environmental Health. The quotes from students, not only is Chuck fantastic at his job, but the best thing about him is how much he cares about the environmental health students. Chuck is someone who deserves all the recognition because he doesn't mind in the slightest to always do the work behind the curtain. We love him and we know that he deserves to be recognized by receiving this award. Another quote from a student, Chuck is the most selfless person I know and is so committed to the encouragement of the environmental health students. His presence alone is enough to turn anyone's bad day around for the better. I once said that Chuck is the grandfather that every kid would be so lucky to have. So congratulations, Chuck, on winning again the Outstanding Support Staff Award. going to present the Outstanding Administrative Staff Award. Uh, a couple of quotes from the nomination packet. This person is to be recognized for his excellent work in daily maintaining and updating student enrollment for our college. He does his job with excellence and is a highly trusted and, valu and valued member of the Dean's Office. Another quote. Always exhibits a friendly and courteous attitude when working with other faculty, staff, and students. And finally, has a very high level of commitment to our college. He has a high level of dignity and respect for others and is well liked at the college and the university. And I'm pleased to present the Outstanding Administrative Staff Award to Chris Sutter. Well, as always, at the end of the picnic, uh, everyone who's here gets a gift. <laughs> Seriously, we will get you your gift. It's a lovely College of Public Health embossed mug with coasters, uh, just the kind of thing to help us, welcome us back uh, when we can get back to campus. I'd like to thank uh, Jan Stork and Dara Young for designing, producing, videotaping, and, and developing this picnic, this virtual picnic. It took a lot of moving parts, and I appreciate all of them. I want to thank Dr. Noland and Dr. Bishop um, for taking the time to record videos. I want to congratulate all the award winners. But in closing, I want to thank every single faculty and staff member in this college. This has been a tough year. It will be a tough year. But it has been an important year and will be an important year. I am deeply appreciative of everything you do. I'm proud to be a part of this college. And so let me close by saying, go public health and go Bucks. You know, I don't always show up at picnics, but when I do, I expect people to be there, or at least some potato salad. Maintain social distance, my friend. <laughs>